Dear Diary, with each passing day without innovation from NVIDIA's board partners, I cry a little. No, I cry a lot. Remember the good times we had together? When they were the first company to add asymmetrical cooling to the MX440? Or put heat pipes on the GeForce 4 Ti 4600E? Remember when they let you update your BIOS without a CPU installed? I just miss them so much. Why? Why did you have to leave us? I don't care if some of your innovations never took off, like the red colored GPU that was $50 more because it was red. I just want you back. <gasps> Ah, uh, box of graphics cards? Oh, EVGA, how did you know I would build this computer with all the super cool stuff you don't make anymore? And how did you know I would tell the people about our sponsor? Ugreen, their new 13-in-1 RevoDoc Max 213 has more ports than seconds in this ad. And with an upgraded cooling system, it'll stay as cool as you with all your stuff plugged in. Check it out at the link below. Using parts from this box and some other ones that we tracked down with some help from EVGA, we are going to be building the most EVGA PC ever. I'm talking GPU, sure, of course, but also motherboard, power supply, RAM. EVGA made RAM? Yes. Yes, they did. And as we put together our system, we'll also be taking a little trip down memory lane, looking through our care packages at some of the ideas that EVGA brought to life over the years. The good and also the bad. Let's start with what's in this box. And look at that, I've got a special guest, the only other person who works here who's old enough to remember all this stuff. Maybe too old. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get started, tell me this, as a certified ASUS shill, are you allowed to wear EVGA oh, shirts? Absolutely. All right, let's do I, it. I've been released of my ASUS contract. There, that's better. Yeah. Now look, they didn't have everything in the archives to send us. I would have loved to get my hands on the 275 co-op for example, the very first GPU PhysX Accelerator combo card. Yes, and the very last one also. Very last one, that was not a very successful concept. No. But we do still have some really neat yeah. stuff. Now, not everything that EVGA you know, innovated was their own innovation. This, for example, is a 7950GX2. This is two GPUs, each on their own independent cards with an SLI bridge in between them. But the innovation was that they were crazy enough to partner with NVIDIA to do it. I believe it was them and... Asus. Oh, that's right. But not even Asus was crazy enough to build one of these. No. Their <laughs> own dual GPU. This is the 460... Two win. Two win, get it? Two twin. win. Oh, twin. No, it's two win. Okay. The cool thing about this is back then, Two mid-range cards in SLI could be quite performance competitive with a single higher-end one and at a price that, you know, it was, was... like a 480. Yeah, or, you know, sometimes even less if you could get them on a deal. The issue is that as soon as you put the engineering into building a combo card... Ah, <laughs> yeah, out the window. Yeah, it all went out the window. This thing was about $700. It's kind of no wonder NVIDIA doesn't let the partners build stuff like that yeah. anymore. <laughs> but still, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you talk to anyone from the board partners, yeah. and that's all they'll talk about is how much more fun it was to build cards back in the day. Uh, how about this one right here? This would have been uh, something that would have been pretty tough to compete with. Right. 980 Ti Kingpin. Do you remember what was yes. special about this guy? I just know Vince put a lot of work into it. Honestly, that's a great summary. Vince Lucido, or Kingpin, worked with EVGA on this card to dramatically increase the available power to it from 250 watt stock to 450 watts. That involved adding additional power connectors to it, a full backplate, and of course, this all copper drop dead sexy cooling design. Do you want to pick the next card? Ah, I actually bought one of these. Oh, of course you did. It's 9800 GX2. They had three different versions, overclocked. Super overclocked. The, <laughs> no. the SSC. I tease, I tease EVGA. Yeah. Wait, that is just super, super overclocked. Yeah, I know. And then they had the, the KO. There was a 25 megahertz difference on the core clock and the memory clock as you went up the range. But the main reason I chose EVGA, it was the uh, design. Because I actually wanted the PNY XLR8. Yeah, yeah. ASUS had the uh, top 
card had the highest memory overclock and it equaled on or, or was right below on, on the core clock on oh, the SSC. Oh, it probably had like a cringy anime character oh, or something. Oh, it did. And it looked like the anime character was in the middle of an autopsy. That was really fun, but I think we all know that builds don't start with GPUs. They start with a motherboard, which conveniently, EVGA also has. They've actually been in the motherboard business for a long time, starting in 2005. And I guess if you think about it, it was a pretty natural progression for them because a lot of the same principles, uh, designing a board with a good circuit layout and excellent power and cooling management go into both GPUs and motherboards. Now, in the early days, EVGA did less of the engineering on their own. One of their most famous boards was simply an NVIDIA reference design for the 680i chipset that EVGA put their label on. But over time, EVGA got pretty darn innovative, even launching Intel chipset motherboards in 2008 once NVIDIA left the market. There were a couple of noteworthy milestones that EVGA hit first, in fact. They were the first to make an XL ATX motherboard that allowed four-way SLI with four dual slot cards. And this boy right here, the EVGA Classified SR2, or Super Record 2, was, I don't know how to put this other than utterly unique. It allowed overclocking on dual Intel Xeon processors and, you guessed it, the ability to install up to four graphics cards in SLI simultaneously. It is both taller and wider than any motherboard standard that existed for consumers at the time. Now, because of that, we are not going to be using it. There are no cases these days that will fit this thing, but we do intend to do a video with this retro monster in the future, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. By the way, speaking of retro, our new retro colorway screwdriver is a must-have for the discerning retro enthusiast, lttstore.com. Instead, we've gone with something a little more modern. We've got a Z790 Dark Kingpin. This is an $800 board for 12th to 14th gen Intel processors with a 14 layer PCB, 21 phase VRM, support for up to 64 gigs of DDR5 at 8,000 megatransfers per second. And this is really cool. They've managed to build in support for PCI Express Gen 5 by 16 to either of their 16X slots. That means you can get full performance out of a PCIe Gen 5 GPU that's installed way down here. That could be important if, say for example, you're going for an overclocking record and you need more room for the sub-zero cooling apparatus you have up here. Can I just say how amazing it is how well these guys know their customers? How cool is this? It's a bare PCB with kind of a stripped down block diagram. This is the neatest swag I think I've ever seen included with a product. Almost as neat as the board itself. Oh. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Here's an EVGA motherboard innovation. They were the first to include right angle connectors on their P67 FTW. Not everything they did was particularly innovative. About a decade ago, they came out with a number of super clocked and super super clocked DDR3 and DDR4 memory kits. As far as I can tell with these, the product development process went something like this. But hey, they were speedy at the time and competitively priced. Unfortunately, these are too outdated for us to use in this system. So for RAM and actually storage, now that I come to think about it, we've just gone with third-party options. Thankfully, that won't be necessary for our case. These are really hard to get your hands on these days because as far as we can tell, Anyone who owns them is holding on to them for dear life. EVGA's DG85 is part of the DG8 series that came out in 2016. It was very well received, but check this out. There's a lower compartment where you put your power supply. That's pretty normal. But what's this? IO down here, including HDMI for your VR headset? That's super cool. And that's just the beginning. You've seen interior cable management. What about exterior cable management. Why would they need that, you ask? So the entire back of the case can have this clean look all hidden away by this awesome door. Ah! <laughs> Man, we got all kinds of stuff going on here. Easily removable dust filter, triple fans in the front. Hey, Ploof, we said that SR2 board wouldn't fit in this case, but I think it would. Will it fit HPTX? It kind of looks like it. We should build it in there then. Uh, yeah, later, later. For now, we're building a real computer anyone would actually want to use today. Ooh, 
Hello? Oh, hey, whoa, hey. You know, it was a little on the pricey side at almost 200 US dollars, but for everything it's got going on, that feels like a deal. What are you thinking for the closed loop cooler? Top mount? Yes. But why did I call it a closed loop cooler instead of an all-in-one or AIO? Because that's what EVGA does. Meet the CLC-X. They've actually done a couple of different closed loop coolers, but this is their most recent. It's available in configurations with up to three 120 millimeter fans and compatible with all the latest sockets. There's not a whole lot more for me to say about it, so while we install it, why don't we do some EVGA history? Did you know that EVGA originally stood for e-commerce video graphics array? They were founded in 1999 by Andrew Han and Keith Rochford, and they were the first company to make driver installation seamless for gamers with ADM or automatic driver management. Does this thing have three BIOS chips on it with a selector switch? That is wild. Next up is our power supply, and this segment is as much about EVGA's past as it is about their future. Did you know that the Supernova 850 and 750G2 units were the first to offer an eco mode switch? which is neat, but we're not using those. Instead, we've got a big beefy boy, the EVGA Supernova 1600 T2. It is fully modular, 80 plus titanium efficient, and cost about $500. EVGA's entry into the power supply market was marked by consistent quality, aggressive pricing, and their trademark strong post-sales support. From talking to them today, power supplies are very much a part of their future going forward, and we wish them the best of luck with that. Naturally, we have gone with the king of EVGA GPUs, the RTX 3090 Ti for the Win 3. Did you guys know that aside from helping us get graphics cards into the hands of gamers at MSRP during the great crypto winter, EVGA also had their own queue system to try to deter scalpers? They also ran their step up program for years, allowing anyone to simply trade in their card and pay the difference if a newer model came out within 90 days of purchase, just to give their customers a little peace of mind. And back in the day, they used to offer lifetime warranties on their GPUs, giving their customers the assurance that they would never have a problem with an EVGA graphics card. Now I wanna solve the mystery of the giant piece of acrylic with an EVGA logo on it. I don't get this, man. There's no obvious place that it goes. I'm sure EVGA is gonna watch this and go, oh, mine is. Wait, oh, I found it. It's in between what we both thought. It is inside the window, but not at the back, just to kind of clean the place up a little. Okay, that looks really sharp. Last piece here is the front panel, but we are far from the end of our adventure because EVGA also makes peripherals. We've got the whole works today. We've got the Torque, Torque, Torque. Ah, sure. X10 desk pad. I've got the X20 mouse and Ploof here is unboxing their Z20 keyboard. We also have their XR1 Pro capture card. The mouse is a fun one. I guess we got this from EVGA and it didn't quite make the cut for shipping to customers. At any rate, We've got another first here. This is the world's first triple sensor mouse. So it's got a Pixar 3335 optical sensor, which is pretty normal, but it has dual liftoff distance detection sensors, which is not normal, but I guess in theory allows you to really fine tune your liftoff distance. Yeah, you know, when you go and then you put it back down. Heck yeah. Now, I noticed something weird about this keyboard because I know that years ago it did come with this button, but what happened to it? Uh, I am not sure. Yeah, well, they don't have E3 anymore, so. <laughs> this is looking good. Now it's time for the Pièce de la Résistance, EVGA's sound card. I'm kidding. We actually bought it, but we couldn't get our hands on one of those. I'm talking instead <laughs> about the Interview 1700 Dual Monitor System. My friends, you could fit so many global patents in this bad boy. For real though, 14. Unfortunately, this product kind of sunk their monitor line. It was innovative, sure, but they say that the downturn in the market in 2008 and 2009 was just terrible timing for it to launch. I think it had other problems, like say for example, that this is clearly a business forward product from a company that up until then had been almost entirely focused on gamers. But to me, 
it was more about the unnecessariness of it. I mean, why buy two 17 inch TN monitors when you can buy one, one dual 17 inch TN monitor? There was cool stuff though. It had an integrated 1.3 megapixel webcam, which could swivel, a built-in microphone, three USB-A ports. I mean, if they had launched this thing right in the start of the COVID pandemic, boom, they would have nailed it. They got the wrong global crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Yet another problem is that it used a connector that you've probably never heard of. DMS 59 or dual monitor solution 59 pins. I love engineer names. Count them, count those pins. <laughs> no. The monitors ran at 1440 by 900 each or WXGA plus, which is not to be confused with WXGA, the other WXGA, WSXG or WSXGA plus. Don't you miss when we named monitor resolutions like that? It was great. It makes Full HD, UHD, QHD seemed downright sensible. Anyway, none of that was the big feature. The big feature was hey. this. Whoa! Want to show the client what you're working on? Bah, it's bah, pretty cool. Bah, 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 bah. It's pretty cool. Compared to today, these monitors, aside from being TN, are not great with a 500 to one contrast ratio. Yes, that is hundreds, 220 nit peak brightness, and eight millisecond pixel response times. But this thing would have been pretty sick for office use back in the day, except that affordable larger panels were like kind of commonplace and 17 yeah. inches was kind of bad. Yeah, it's an all-in-one solution though. So, so that I can what? Take it with me? Yeah, look at that, it's great. Why? Walk away. We got this, all we need is two Display port to DVI adapters. Oh, wow, that is. <gasps> yeah, we spent, it powered on! We've spent so much time talking about EVGA's awesome design. This interview logo, not their finest work. I don't think this mouse works. Oh my God. This does not illuminate. Okay, hold on. Let's get a mouse. B stock, more like dead stock. Dead stock. Have you guys got the interview already? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Because I brought a vampire. Oh my God. <laughs> interview with the vampire. Wow, that looks like garbage. <laughs> That's TN panel from 20, what, yeah. 2009? One of the strats back in the day, you guys, was to put a glossy surface on the screen to kind of try and uh, boost the perceived contrast and clarity. It didn't work. Okay, what games are we playing? Uh, whatever you want, Halo, Counter-Strike. Nice. It's, you know what, it's not 60 hertz, Linus, it's better than 60 hertz. Wow, that motion blur ghosting trail. <laughs> it's it looks like bad. I have mouse pointer trails on. It's pretty bad, eh? Check the check display settings, though. 66.350, hey! 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 <laughs> this is it, guys. This is ready. This, for better or for worse, this rig is as EVGA as any rig can be. It's dead quiet, hey? Yeah. Should we get it closed up? It looks yeah, amazing. Yeah, let's close it, let's close it. It is a beautiful case. Okay, hey, you gonna peel one side? Uh, I was gonna wait for the SR2 build. Yeah, we kind of have to do let's an SR2 Let's wait for build. the SR2 build. Do, do the one? inside, do the inside peel. All right, okay. All right. There, it's at least a little bit more clear. Yeah. We're gonna see it in all of its glory next time. There we go, an EVGA gamer. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness, this is the worst thing ever. It's playable. Yeah, this monitor is, I don't remember badness like this. Technically, I mean, no, no, that's oh, my terror. Look, wow. I can't tell on this monitor. Wow. Blaming the peripherals. Well, I mean, a that's, little bit, yeah. That's what a real gamer does. <laughs> Look, that's my blood on the wall. No, I'm gonna win. If you get a kill. I, I couldn't even see my crosshair, dude. <laughs> I couldn't even I, see it. Oh, wow, it's pretty bad. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, come on! Oh. I didn't hit him at all. No, no, I got this. I'm gonna get a kill. All right, one kill. Oh no, I had the bomb. Okay, well, okay, well follow your team. I'll just follow plant your team. It. Yeah, oh, get, no, I'm... just toss it to your teammate. Just rush B, rush B, rush B. Well, what? They're not rushing B. You gotta rush B. You said B. follow the damn team. Well, what is this? How did that not kill him? You were aiming on his left shoulder. His I was right. not. I camera was his left. Head. Camera left. I could see it from here. That was his head. I mean, if it was his head, he'd be dead. <laughs> Right, I brought up float playing because we were talking about how you could stream on here. Float playing, great streaming quality, great Good. for WAN show. It's got a webcam right there. Okay, wow. you wouldn't use that. In fairness to me, this is pretty bad, huh? It's pretty bad. Like, remember when 40 milliseconds of input lag was a thing? I know, this feels really rough. So floaty. It's pretty, yeah, right? I can tell you have no control I... right now. 
Oh, it's so oh, bad. Aiming, you were aiming at his shoulder. I was, I was. You were aiming at his hey, shoulder. I can admit when I was aiming at the wrong spot. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> it's so hard. Okay, here, Colton, you want to turn? Whoa, what are we doing? You got to try to get one kill. What do you mean I gotta try to get one kill? Yeah. Easy, what are you talking the about? The challenge is over when you get one kill. <laughs> oh, what is happening? Hold on, no, you're dead, you're dead. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even know he's spectating. <laughs> the monitor's called the interview. Do you get the joke now? Why he's wearing a cape? Yeah, the joke is that you should probably do some. <laughs> I didn't even realize we're in this game, you know, what, what is this? <laughs> Why? Yeah, but what if I wanted to watch the game? Boom. Does it even flip? Oh, it it does. did! That it was does. really good. Okay, that's pretty that cool. That was really good. If you manage to put a bullet on target, you'll be ahead of me in blue. <laughs> yeah. No! <laughs> he did! That seems like a really high refresh rate, uh, good uh, gaming uh, yeah. device. 66 hertz? 60, 66? <laughs> I got one. Headshot. Hey. Whoa, no there way! Yeah, yeah. Boom, headshot! Like Get right another one! Here. Whoa, <laughs> that's a tall order. <laughs> it was a nice shot, though. You could barely see his head. That was pretty good. Now that some time has passed, we've asked EVGA, hey, why did you guys end your partnership with NVIDIA and stop making graphics cards in general? And after some PR talk, it basically boiled down to the market being tilted toward the chip manufacturers and away from the add-in board partners, meaning that their margins were razor thin and it just wasn't worth it anymore. It also seemed like they weren't happy with chip manufacturer restrictions that limited their ability to innovate, which as you guys saw earlier was a big part of what EVGA was about, nor were they happy with how expensive graphics cards, a product meant for fun primarily, were getting. They said that Nvidia has strong technology and they wish them all the best in their future endeavors, which apparently is all AI all the time now. So. Take that as you will. For now, we sincerely wish EVGA the best. They didn't sponsor this video or anything, and if I'm being honest, I don't know if they're going to be around to honor their legendary 10-year warranties. Their product lineup has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk down to, it seems like they're gonna be quite focused on power supplies going forward, but hey, we've still got a lot of fond memories and this was a lot of fun to do. You'll find links to some of their products in the video description below, um, and you'll also find the link to today's sponsor, Dardio. It's a shame we live in a world where even popular tech YouTubers can be victims to hackers and scammers. Guardio has both a web app and a mobile app to keep you safe online no matter how you browse. If you're opening an email that maybe you shouldn't be, Guardio is there to let you know that something got past your spam filter. And they can even do this with SMS messages. That means no more banks texting you, telling you to open your account so they can make a totally real deposit. Guardio will also let you know in real time if your data is compromised so you can handle it immediately. Plus, they shield you from phishing attempts so you don't end up like some unnamed popular tech YouTube channels. Plus, you get even more features like malware blocking, pop-up elimination, fraudulent website protection, and you can use it with up to five users at no extra cost. So empower your online browsing today with Guardio at the link down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out that quad FX video that I, did I mention it earlier? I don't know if I, I ended up mentioning maybe. it. Whatever, it's a crazy video, go, go watch it. Gary helped. <laughs>